Tip Top Trippers, my name is Donato. Today is Sunday the 7th of November and in this video I'll be giving you a quick update on what's been happening this week as I commence my training for my next event coming up and also appropriate clothing wear for upcoming winter months. And are our smartwatches actually as smart as some of us think? Let's go! But before I get into my update, I'd really appreciate it if you guys, if you are new here or whether you haven't already done so, please do give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe because that would be a great help to me and the channel here. Thank you all so much. Let's crack on with the update. Welcome back, welcome back guys. For those who've been watching regularly, you'll notice that I'm going a little bit quicker than my normal walk and talk pace. Yes, I thought I'd take you along today on my long run. Yes, it's been quite a week this week. And as you probably hear from my voice, it's considerably better than it was uh, last week. So this bug virus is finally getting out of my body. Hasn't totally cleared. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been quite a week training wise. And I love the comments you guys leave. So please do leave comments below. Um, following on from uh, last week's update you're asking oh some of you are guessing what am I doing the Malaga half marathon oh I would dearly love to be doing that one out in the sunshine in Spain but no it's a uh, it's literally five weeks five weeks today and uh, it will be a local one in the Midlands Nottinghamshire to be exact the Keyworth turkey trot which I've done a few times and uh, so yeah, this week in earnest was the start of the training to that. So it, obviously if you've been concluded this week, and that will be six weeks worth of training. Um, but it is off the back of finishing uh, those couple of marathons. So it's not like I'm doing just six weeks training for a half marathon. But it'd be interesting to see what level of fitness I get to um, in that time because as soon as I've completed that I'll be starting the uh, Mission Marathon series with you guys taking you through to a Spring Marathon because here in the UK there'll be the Manchester Marathon on the 3rd of April and Brighton Marathon on the 10th of April so um, so whether you're doing those two or not it'd be great to follow along and if you are in different parts of the world and have a spring marathon coming up it will definitely be for someone for that and, and share it with all your friends and family also but this week what a funny week of training because i've been resting for literally two days the first run i done was on the tuesday so if i just quickly go through the runs i've done this week tuesday thursday saturday yesterday and now so the tuesday was they've all been super easy as i go straight into a headwind now <laughs> um, apart from yesterday's so tuesday was literally just 30 minutes um because i tend to go by time um rather than distance so that was just 30 minutes thursday was about uh, 50 minutes and uh, yesterday was meant to be four sets of two kilometers at tempo but uh, by the second one my legs weren't having any of it so uh, I just finished off after the two sets of 2k I just finished off doing easy so um, I definitely don't beat myself up over that it was only one run and uh, you know, as it was just the uh, one run, I'm not going to, uh, let's say, I often see people on social media beating themselves up or making a drama out of it. Um, I haven't fully recovered from the uh, virus, so why would I? And uh, so today's run is just an hour and a half. I say just an hour and a half, I don't want to sound flippant for those who don't run these distances. But the fascinating thing is, uh, which I was saying at the beginning, are these smart watches as smart as they make out? By the time uh, this watch I've got here is a 
Garmin Phoenix 5 and uh, it's sold as a multi-sport watch so for me I would think as a multi-sport watch it would have my fitness status there irrespective of whether I run cycle swim walk you know I can understand it's going to track some GPS but I have been on daily walks on the GPS but at the end of the two weeks it showed I had no activity status which um, have you ever rested so much from running that your Garmin said that and then once I'd done two GPS activity runs it was shown I was unproductive which I'm quite used to because most of the time this watch just tells me I'm unproductive <laughs> because uh, only when you do certain types of runs certain heart rates, certain paces does it regard yourself as being productive so are they really that smart? it still showed my VO2 at 61 and uh, which shows crazy race times, predicted race times so really do do you trust your smartwatches? or do you just use it for um, distance and time? which even sometimes the distance depending on where you're running is highly questionable because of the GPS tracking anyway so that was my training for this week onwards to talk about appropriate clothing to wear because that was another question I had so yes as I fast approach the uh, canal here in West Yorkshire yeah it's so beautiful here um, I just love it love coming out here love doing long runs along the canals it's nice and flat it's all about getting time on feet which I'll be talking more about during my series of um, mission marathon um, but more about that as the weeks progress so yeah I've got five weeks now to the half marathon and uh, one of the questions left comment was uh, would anyone recommend a waterproof coat that uh, doesn't cost over 200 pounds well for me the question is not just budget but what are you looking to achieve so right now I'm out here it's pretty nippy and whilst I'm wearing what might be deemed as a raincoat if there was a sudden heavy downpour I would be soaked through with this so it wouldn't be appropriate to keep me dry so the question I would be asking is what are you looking to achieve? are you looking to stay dry? are you looking to stay warm? yeah? so for me the most important thing is about keeping the right temperature and wearing appropriate gear for the actual run that you're doing so right now I'm doing a super easy run long run I'll check the weather forecast I don't know whether it's coming out on uh, this because I have got the uh, windproof protector on the camera so hopefully it's not doesn't sound as blowy sounds clear but it is extremely windy here slow me down so I decided to wear this as more of a windbreak yeah to keep the chill off me because for me it's important to keep my core temperature right uh, almost irrespective of whether we're wet or not wet so for me <coughs> whoop, there you go clear out the old uh, system <laughs> Do I edit that out? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I've got the canal here on one side, the river Calder on the other side here. So if I was going out and doing tempos, sprints, I probably wouldn't be wearing this because I would overheat and that wouldn't feel comfortable for my run. And uh, yeah, so it'd be counterproductive 
So the key things is what kind of run are you going on and what is the weather like where you are going on the run? That's essential to uh, know. So based on that criteria, budget wise, well, if you want quality, unfortunately, you're going to have to pay for it. I was fortunate enough. I was fortunate enough to find a Gore-Tex, which in my opinion are the best raincoats at half price. So I think it was 80, 90 pounds. Half price that was, yeah. But it's super good through the winter months. That almost always comes out, both as a wind protector, but also if it is raining. It is super good and worth every penny because they do last. Well, it's lasted for me anyway. So uh, that sums up the uh, appropriate clothing for the winter. Do you have any recommendations? Leave it in the comments below. And uh, I'll continue on. And I look forward to seeing you at next week's uh, video where I'll be updating you on week two of the uh, half marathon training. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate the time you take to watch these videos. And, and also the thumbs up, subscribing. Love it. Thank you all so much for your time. See you all soon. Bye bye. So that's the long run done. Thank you for staying to the very end. Sometimes I put on a little uh, extra at the end of my videos with some top tips or just something a little bit um, different. Um, for those of you interested, the route that I was doing was along the uh, canal between <coughs> Brick House and Sobe Bridge. I did go a little bit beyond Sobe Bridge and uh, it's on the Calder Valley Greenway route and right here right now I'm crossing the river Calder here in uh, Calder Vale, Calderdale. I can't remember the exact name of the area but anyway <laughs> know your geography but the two top tips I have having completed a long run and I'll be covering this in the Mission Marathon as I cross the road and um, because it's all about attention to detail and I'll be covering that in the full 16, 18 week period, whatever it uh, may be. Um, the two things, yeah? Oh, do you like the holes in me gloves, by the way? Um, two things, after, we all know that after a marathon, you wanna keep walking, keep moving, keep the blood flowing. It's the same with a long run. So right now I'm doing a walk, 10, 15, 20 minutes. It might be a bit longer than that, because it's a bit uphill. Um, but yeah, a walk after a long run is essential you know minimum i would say about 10 minutes keep the old uh, blood flowing through the legs and helps aid recovery um, because we know that uh, when we're doing tempos and sessions we have a warm-up and a cool down and it's the same with the long run that attention to detail for me is essential so that's tip number one tip number two practicalities especially today with such a windy day um i mentioned the uh, about the clothing that's appropriate and sometimes I forgot to mention that there's layers but the actual tip I think this is more by accident today than actual planning is if you're going out on a long run especially if you're doing an out and back so in one direction coming back the opposite direction try and plan the out part into the headwind yeah so you've got all your energy going there so when you're coming back if your energy is a bit lower you're not having to run into a headwind. Makes sense. Attention to detail is so important. And for me, I'll, I'll cover more details. You'll end up going into loads and loads of things, but that was the essential two tips. Yeah, do a walk at the end of your long run, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, get the blood flowing and try and plan your route so that uh, you get the outward part is more tougher than the coming back. If that's the kind of route that you do because everyone does different types of routes but if you can plan around that then that's brilliant so once again that's it thank you so much for watching and uh, you can follow me on the socials twitter 
Instagram, Facebook. I don't use some of them that much, but uh, if you wanted to see the training runs, you can follow me on Strava, links are below. Um, but on the socials, I'm a poet with pace. And um, why is that for all of you who are new here? Um, because I do a bit of poetry now and again. So, um, so yeah, my signature poem is, I'm the poet with pace, often seen running with a red face, and sometimes at the heart of the race too. So follow me now and I'll show you how to run with poise, panache, elegance and grace. Yes, thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe. See you all next week with an update with five weeks to half marathon. Oh yes.